Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Want Own Life, who says, My 57 female daughter, 30 female, is getting married for the third time. I do not want to pay for her wedding. And I feel like a bad parent. I should start by saying that my daughter is an only child. She has always been our princess, so to speak, and she's received everything material that a girl could ask for. Before you criticize my husband, her father and I for spoiling her, we do realize that we shouldn't have given her everything from a young age, but we didn't know any better back then. And we had the money, we're quite well off, so we figured why not support our only child. My husband owns his business and I am a school teacher. Together we make decent money and I am looking to retire in the near future. When we first started out I stayed at home and my husband worked an office job. And so my daughter has been pampered with all my attention and her father's support. She is now going to be married for the third time in her short life. Her only job is occasionally supply teaching in the same school board I work at. So she doesn't have much of a big career yet but I do hope she will find work. I'll spare you the long of it. She married her high school boyfriend at 22 years old and they divorced less than two years later in a bitter fight. The wedding was lavish and it was a first and we truly believed that they would make it work. I guess my husband and I also saw through rose-colored glasses since we were married very young as well and are approaching our 35th anniversary. My husband and I pitched in around $25,000 for the wedding ceremony and reception and perhaps another 3000 for the honeymoon to Europe. The second time she was proposed to by another man she was dating. He was a hard-working blue-collar man, but his family didn't have much money. Again, she asked if we could help out with her wedding, that it was true love this time around. We met the man, and he was a stand-up, wholesome person. And so, a year after that, my daughter, then 27, was married to the second husband. We paid for almost all of the wedding costs and the honeymoon to the tune of $43,000. Her then husband's mother was a nurse and his father was a deadbeat. They didn't provide much when it came to the wedding itself and I admit, the husband and I did harbor ill will towards the fact that her husband's father's name was clearly printed on the reception and invitations as a generously contributing member of the wedding party. But that's another story. And they did divorce because of money issues less than three years later. We... Tired by this time, forked over money for her divorce costs and tried to regroup our finances. We do have a comfortable nest egg saved up for post-retired life. I would like to travel the world and maybe buy a small lake house with my husband. He also enjoys woodworking as a hobby. But now my daughter, who has begun dating another man, has excitedly showed us that she is engaged once again. The man in question proposed less than a year into their dating and she is elated more than anything. Because after her second divorce, she didn't think any man would want her anymore. My daughter has hinted at the wedding costs and brings home bridal magazines and ideas for cakes and dresses and venues. And I want to be happy for her happiness. But there's a voice inside me that is screaming enough. We have spent almost over $140,000 of my husband's and my money for my daughter's two failed marriages. Wedding, reception, honeymoon costs, divorce costs. I cannot believe she is thinking of planning another lavish ceremony at our expense. I've tried suggesting maybe this time around she should opt for a small backyard ceremony this time. But she turns it around on us and says that we don't believe in her happiness and that we are being cheap as she is our only daughter and her father and I are quite well off, which to be fair, she is right. I'm at a loss of what to say to her. And what jumped out to me in this one straight away in the first paragraph, you know, you said she's always been your princess. She had everything that she could ask for. And, you know, you said that you spoiled her and you realized that and you shouldn't have given her everything from a young age, but you didn't know better back then. But now you've continued to do so by paying for these two weddings and she's expecting it as well. And it just kind of feels, you know, if you pay for this one, there's going to be another wedding down the road at some point as well. I would absolutely just be putting your foot down and saying, not at all. That's not happening. I'm not paying for it. You spent over $140,000 already. Holy moly. Jay Barber Sky says, if your daughter has truly found love in this third relationship, then it shouldn't depend on an expensive wedding. 
You and your husband should firmly tell your daughter that you are not going to pay for her third wedding. If she wants an expensive wedding, she should get a job and pay for it herself. And if you can't get over your guilt, you might want to consider seeing a good therapist to help you sort through all your feelings. You're doing your daughter no favors by continuing to fork over money. Sounds like to me, she's more in love with lavish weddings than with men she chooses to stand in to play the role of groom. Another user says, so lots of people have told you that you shouldn't pay. What I haven't seen yet is someone saying she will probably throw an epic tantrum when you put your foot down and you will have to stick it out or she will win. And the next time you try to put your foot down, she'll throw an even bigger tantrum. This is a well-known in research behavioral phenomenon known as extinction, which is what happens when you stop reinforcing behavior that used to be reinforced. If you don't firmly say no and stick with it, you are forever screwed. She will say mean things. She will get really nasty. Stay calm and don't budge. This is a 30-year-old toddler that you've created. All the times you didn't say no are going to bite you in the ass here. And I'm saying, be ready. Do not let her manipulate you on this one. It's totally in your power not to write that check. For what it's worth, my well-off parents gave me 5k for my wedding in 2008. I would never fucking dream of asking for that financial support for a second wedding. Panic Bread quotes a section and says, you are continuing to ruin your child. Parenting doesn't stop when they turn 18. Grow a backbone and tell your kid, stop suggesting and straight up tell your kid under no uncertain terms that you will not pay for her wedding. She will throw the inevitable temper tantrum. Don't back down. And one more comment which says, um, she's a 30 year old adult. It's fucking ridiculous you would ask and it's ridiculous if you consider paying a valid option, which it sounds like you don't. As someone her age, I'm 33, I would be absolutely ashamed if I were her in even hinting at this. I'd be appalled if my parents even tried to pay for me for something since, you know, I'm an adult and make my own money. You've made some mistakes and raised an entitled monster. You need to find a way to stop this before wedding number four. I sort of wonder about all these people that's being invited to this wedding every time. Is it all family and friends and everyone that's turning up? You know, don't get me wrong. I know people have second marriages, possibly third marriages, but I'm not sure how I would feel in that situation, inviting all those people two or three times, you know, that's just myself. I know, as I said, I know there's people out there that have two marriages, etc., under different circumstances, but it just sounds like this is a constant thing. But OP does update the post and says, hello, it's been a long time. I wanted to retroactively thank everyone for the advice and the anger. Must admit that hearing others rage about my situation was pretty cathartic for me. I wasn't going to log back in to post an update. I couldn't even recall the password for this throwaway account, but so many of you gave me excellent advice that I feel I must give an update, sad as it is. Long story short, my daughter is getting her third divorce. We're no longer on speaking terms and she has broken our hearts. Short story long, as many of you predicted, she threw a great big tantrum when her father and I told her explicitly that we would not be paying for the wedding this time around. We said we would buy her a wedding dress and the cake, but that would be the end of it. That whatever else she wanted would have to come from her and her husband's pocketbook. She said we don't care for her happiness. She cried, said that we were selfish. Everything all you said was going to happen. All these things hurt so much to hear because they aren't true. We do care very much for her, but enough wasn't simply enough. She went so far as to chuck her wedding planner binder into the backyard pool, which was grotesque to watch. We asked to meet the fiance in question over dinner. What a gem he was. Tattoos all over his knuckles and his neck. Showed up to meet us in sweatpants and an ill-fitting hoodie. Didn't even shake our hand or introduce himself properly. He looked like trailer trash. When we asked what his occupation was, he said he was a sound technician, which made me feel embarrassed for being so prejudiced. But after a quick conversation at the dinner table, where he behaved in the most disgusting manner, turns out he is a freelance DJ. At 39 years old, I believe one should at least be put together, not living with other roommates and working at clubs on weekends. My daughter, I do not know what was wrong with her. She looked at him with such adoring eyes as if he were the best thing since sliced bread. We doubted that he could provide for himself, let alone a family. I don't know if this was a sign, but the sight of this man-boy solidified our decision to not finance a drop of our daughter's third wedding. We still agreed to pay for the cake and dress, but no more. We even had doubts that maybe this thug was only planning to marry our daughter for the money. We assumed it was true when we found out she'd been paying for a few months worth of his rent that he could not afford to pay out of his own pocket. Like I said, 
I don't know what was wrong with her. We gave her a budget of $13,000 for a beautiful dress and maybe another $2,000 for the cake. The wedding plan in itself was a disaster as my daughter had a meltdown over every single little thing that went wrong, even though we tried to tell her that she could use the $15,000 budget to plan the entire wedding instead of just spending it on the dress and cake alone. That was our intention. That maybe she could scale back the dress and cake for a more humble affair. Maybe it would teach her the value of a dollar. She would not budge. She did not invite us to the wedding, let alone the reception. We don't even know how it was, as we're not shown any photographs afterwards. I spent the entire week crying when I found out she had left us out of the wedding party. She came back a few times with a U-Haul and her disgusting husband to take her possessions from our home and moved in with him. While my husband and I were gone on a vacation to New Orleans, right before Christmas, we had received several voicemails all from our daughter. Her voice was slurring as if she had been heavily drinking or on drugs. She said that she was going to divorce as he was a fucking deadbeat who couldn't even treat her to a nice dinner. She said she's had to sell her engagement ring to pay for the rent, as she is still living with his roommates and that this is the part that just sends me into anger. If only we had paid for her wedding and helped her buy a home with him. This wasn't even discussed between us. I do not know where she got this idea from, and that she would have made this marriage last if we had given her more money. My God, what have we done? I'm shaking with anger just typing this. My husband wanted to leave her a seething voicemail. I talked him out of it. As far as we know, she has moved forward with a divorce. We'll be here for her. We will take her back into our homes, but only if she wishes. At this point, we have heard nothing from her and she does not pick up her phone. It is so easy to blame ourselves for being bad parents and I just feel so awful. She is our only child, and if any of our nieces or nephews behave this way to our siblings, we would have cut them out of the family in a second, but we can't. She is our only child, now 31 years old and a thrice divorcee. It pains me so much what has happened over the last year. I feel like I've lost a daughter. You put another $15,000 into this wedding and you wasn't even invited later criticized for not putting more money into it buying a house as well and that was op's last post on the matter and where do you go with that op said that they will take their daughter in if they reach out and i can't help but feel that's still going to be enabling that behavior maybe if you do take her in it's under it's under stipulations that she seeks help counseling or or something along those lines because surely you just can't continue like this holy moly that's incredibly sad but what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to another story. And our next story is going to be one from the Am I the Asshole subreddit. Doesn't have an update as yet. From IC Performer 3310 who says, Am I the Asshole for ignoring my ex-wife's wishes regarding having our daughters in my wedding and uninviting her? I, 43 male, am getting married to my partner, Lauren, 32 female, in less than a month. It is a destination wedding that has been in the pipeline for over 18 months now. I have my two daughters, 16 and 11, with my ex-wife, Anna, 46 female. And Lauren has a daughter from a prior relationship, deceased ex due to a car accident while Lauren was pregnant, who is five. Anna and I split five years ago, when Anna realized she was bi and wanted to pursue a woman from her work. I will admit that I probably moved on with Lauren too fast due to my devastation over my 21-year relationship ending and Lauren still being in grief from the loss of her husband, but struggling with, at the time, a very sick newborn. However, for the most part, we have all been able to remain amicable and we all went to Anna's marriage to a co-worker, Lynn, about six months ago. Originally, the plan for my wedding to Lauren was for us all to travel to the destination together that my eldest could be a bridesmaid and her younger two could be flower girls. However, Anna and Lynn have recently broke up and Anna has asked us to postpone our wedding out of respect to her. When I tried to explain that it is impossible as it would cost us a lot to do, she flew off the handle and accused me of deliberately hurting her, cheating on her with Lauren. Not true, though there was a couple of months between our split and meeting Lauren. Leaving her for a younger woman, called Lauren a gold digger and threatened to ruin our wedding. I hung up on her and sent her an email uninviting her from our wedding due to her threat. She now says she is revoking consent to our daughter's participation. I don't think this is fair on them 
and I don't want them to feel left out, so I merely pointed out that the wedding is on my week, and she doesn't get a say. Am I the arsehole if I ignore her wishes? Edited to add, there was an incident with a trip to NZ a bit over a year ago where Anna tried to stop the trip. She thought we were showing off our financial state slash we were visiting Lauren's former in-laws so they could see her daughter slash their granddaughter for the first time since COVID and we ended up having to involve lawyers. There is a precedent for me being able to take the girls overseas without Anna's permission so as long as it doesn't affect her time with them. Now, she's just angry from what's going on in her life right now. And as long as you're not going to get yourself in trouble, like taking the kids out of state or, or whatever, like you said in like you said in your edit there, then absolutely not the asshole to me. I wouldn't blame you for uninviting her from your wedding. She threatened to do something during it. So now how can you trust her? I guess my only worry now is that she may say something to the children to turn them against you or something along those lines. Razar says, not the arsehole, Anna is low-key acting bitter. Yeah, she's having a tough time, but I wouldn't even ask my best friend to postpone her wedding because I'm going through a breakup. She's overreacting, trying to guilt you by keeping the kids away from a special moment, just because things didn't go her way. Especially if she never mentioned any of the issues she now has with your fiancé. Why now? I wish I seemed more of an emotional reason than concern of safety for your kids, or anything in that nature. I would honestly keep my foot down and have my daughter still be part of my wedding. If I had legal custody, of course, which I'm assuming you do, stating it's your week anyway. Please Coffee Me says it's rich that she's accusing you of cheating when her desire to cheat on you was the reason she broke up a 21-year marriage. Anna needs some help, therapy, to get through her breakup. She's being unreasonable. Anna is aware of the cost to postpone a wedding, not only for you, but for all of your guests who have already made plans. It might cost a bit, but tell her you're going to involve lawyers again. Remind her she has lost that battle before. How much unnecessarily it costs both of you. Not the arsehole. Oh, that name, please coffee me. I could do with a brew right now. But I'm going to turn this one to you guys because the comments pretty much follow along the same lines in that one. What do you guys make of that situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Again, from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit from Double Mobile 8057 and says, Am I the Arsehole for telling my son he will not be taking over the family business and it is going to my daughter? I have two kids, my older son and my daughter. They're 25 and 21. We have a family business that works on farm equipment and it is a very good business. Most farmers, if something breaks, can usually fix it, but when they call us, they will pay a lot so they don't have to buy another half a million tractor. Anyways. I've been telling my kids since they were young that if they want to take over the business, then they have to get a business degree and work a lot with me to learn everything. Basically, they have to put in the work. When they were both teenagers, I took them on jobs so they would understand the job. My son made it very clear he didn't want the job and went to college for sociology. My daughter, on the other hand, threw herself into the business. She's about to graduate with a business and robotics majors. She also decided to stay at home during college and she's been working with me in her free time. The only issue with my daughter is that she has trouble lifting things, but that's what strength training is for. So now is the problem. My son gave me a call. He moved away for a job after graduation. And he told me he wants to take over the business. I told him no and it's going to his sister. This started a huge argument and he called me a jerk. He contacted some of the older relatives and they are mad at me also. Editing, I'm not splitting the business because it causes way too many problems. Now, my thought you've already countered with your edit. I was thinking, can't you just give him like a, a lower share of the business, 10, 20% or something like that? You were giving your daughter the overall share. But if you're not prepared to do that, then I would say, you know, you set out your requirements and your daughter took those up while your son chose not to. I don't think it would be very fair to go back on that now and... Take that away from your daughter when she's worked towards it. But Queen EB says, Not the arsehole, your son walked away from the responsibilities of what your company needs to continue to exist. While your daughter dedicated herself to the company's continued success. Not only should he not take over the company, but he shouldn't be involved in it in any way. There's nothing he could contribute to it and would only use his assets. I've worked for too many companies that the parents made successful, only for entitled descendants to suck away the profits without doing any work. Opie says I agree with him not being involved at all. 
I don't trust him not to undermine his sister or just not to cause issues in the first place for the business. It's already hard work and I don't want to make it harder for her. Living Highlight says not the arsehole, it's not 1802. The oldest boy doesn't automatically inherit everything anymore. Okay, son, do you think you're entitled to the business despite your sister working her ass off to learn the business, get a degree in business and get expensive experience in the business? And that she did all of this because I was very clear about my expectations for whoever would want to take it over. She completed those expectations. You did not. Explain to me how giving the business to you makes sense and wouldn't be a complete betrayal to your sister. Honestly, what could he possibly say? And the comments did continue down that path. But what do you guys make of this one? Do you have a different opinion on the matter? How would you, would you consider splitting that business if you was in that position? Or, or do you think it could cause more issues down the road? Family working together, that kind of thing. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. Truly, it's absolutely amazing. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.